Yo, Dave. Where are you, son? I have a voice that talks to me all the time. That at first, you know, that I didn't know what it was at first. Well, it's a part of me. There's activity in part of my brain that other people don't have, and it will call names, it will say stupid things that I get mad at because I don't want to hear them. You know, why would anybody want to hear somebody talking in your ear? He goes through some horrible ups and downs. I mean, we end up in the hospital sometimes. We've been at the emergency room when he's been suicidal. It's been, you know, it's just been, it's just been horrific when he does relapse. I would sit there and I would wait for the phone call. And that's really, really difficult to live like that. You know, I would hear reports about David that, you know, he was living on the streets or that he was, had this, this terrible crack addiction and he was self-medicating because of his, his mental illness. And, and, it was, and there was a, a really long time where, and you know, at the same time, he was also developing into this extraordinary painter. You gotta be. And when you soldier up and you can never contest for what you feel, just a prodigy. Cause I can never let go without the phone touching down on what I what I ought to be. Now this is just another odyssey or artistry. Maybe this is pottery, a lottery, a ticket. I started rapping in prison and every night I practice. I love rap. I love original hip hop. I think it's an amazing art. That's lack of meaning is depleting your nerves. Eating your suggestions leading to swerves. The path curves are too sharp to angle for words. This 10-day salute to sausage has something for everyone. Located in Landa Park, a short distance from the interstate, the event has multiple venues of food, drink, and shopping, plus live music and rides that it promises to be a fun time for the whole family. Everybody gets here, they're in a great mood, they want to have a good time, they want to relax, uh, a lot, you know, good family atmosphere, just a lot of good fun. Local vendors offer a wide array of traditional German foods from bratwurst to wiener schnitzel. And there are some not so traditional foods several fried things you wouldn't think possible. There are numerous beers to choose from, if you're old enough, and a wide assortment of live music. Starting in 1961, this festival has gone through a few name changes from Sausage Week to Worst Week and finally Worst Fest. It also had to change locations because the founders never imagined a small town festival that began with an attendance of 2,000 people would go to 35,000 during only its third year. Worst Fest is a nonprofit organization that helps promote local commerce through tourism. That in turn helps raise money for local civic organizations. Something that we look forward to every year. It's on our calendar as soon as they decide which weekend it's going to be. We love Worst Fest. Worst Fest continues through November 15th with fluctuating hours depending on whether it's a weekday or weekend. Tickets are $10 at the gate and 8 if you're purchased online. Drink tickets can also be purchased in advance. Children under 12 get in for free. So don your lederhosen and find an interesting hat and come down to Landa Park. Celebrate German culture and leave knowing that you helped fund a worthwhile cause. For Bobcat Update, I'm Paul Yarbrough. It's that time of year again. Get ready to set your clocks back an hour. Daylight savings time ends this Sunday at 2 in the morning. That means daylight savings hours will be shorter and the nights will be longer. Sunset for November 1st is scheduled for around 5 p.m. Central Standard Time with the days becoming even shorter in the following weeks. Be sure to set your alarms accordingly and look forward to your extra hour of sleep. After August 1st of next year, anyone licensed to carry concealed guns may bring them onto college campuses and into classrooms. University President Denise Trouth has asked for input on how best to implement the new law at Texas State. Information is being gathered now. A couple of weeks ago, we asked several students what they thought of the legislation. Today, we turn the spotlight onto faculty and staff members, those who work here. It will change the mindset on campus from an area of free speech and risk-taking and creativity to a culture of more fear and caution. It's a terrible idea to have guns on campus. Um, students and faculty should be able to come into a classroom and not feel threatened, um, not feel like if they provoke one another that they're going to get shot. I don't feel that there's a need for the excess 
number of guns on campus. Um, I think UPD and the university provide a secure environment as is. I feel like the more guns that are available, the more apt there's going to be problems. I think it's more work for the campus police. College is this wonderful time for exploration and I really fear that guns on campus will prevent people from taking the risks that are necessary um, for growth, self-discovery, and learning. My name is Austin Van Zandt. I started a local business and that business name is Redbud Roasters. It, it's nice that people can come in and finally get a cup of coffee on demand. So, uh, coming up through the farmers markets it was mainly just pounds of beans and all that but it's nice having a place that can be open seven days a week and uh, offer people a selection of coffees. Um, I really want to go and start getting the coffee myself and dealing with the farmers who grow the coffee. Um, travel down there and you know bring the coffee back on boat maybe you know, things like that. So I'm the only commercial coffee roaster in town. I really like being able to make you know individual French presses for the hot rooms. I really like having a manual lever, espresso machine, um, you know pour overs, things of that nature. You know it might take a little bit extra time, but uh, the quality that hopefully makes up for any extra minutes that they might spend at the counter. exclusively organic and I know that a lot of people really like that. We're also fair trade and shade grown as well so um, that's something that's a passion of mine that's you know a big reason why I wanted to start doing coffee was to be able to find something. Um, the world's really an amazing place so I always felt comfortable trying to do something that's you know reaches across our borders and can be mutually beneficial. I love when people come in and talk to me 20-30 minutes at a time and just hang out have a good cup of coffee, you know, talk politics, philosophy, or just the weather. <laughs> I mean, it doesn't matter, but I, I definitely enjoy where we're at as a business right now.